Welcome to Learning Mole. We're continuing on thinking about multiplication for kids and today we're going to think about the times tables games or multiplication facts games. These can be done in the classroom or at home and it's just really to make learning those times tables a little bit more interactive and a little bit more fun and getting the children up and moving and really thinking. So the first one we're going to think about is fizz buzz. Now I always start this with just being called buzz because you need to set up the rules and allow the children to, to understand the steps within this game before you can make it a little bit more challenging and the fizz buzz part is the more challenging element. So basically you will choose a times table that you're focusing on. So I'm going to choose the two times tables and basically what will happen is if it's just you and a part you and your child, you can be um, a player and they can be a player or if you're going around the whole classroom everybody can join in and basically it's just a matter of counting around the classroom but every time there is a multiple of two or two times table answer you have to say the word buzz instead of the answer or the number so it will start like this so if I'm playing um, with a partner I can say one they have to say buzz I will say three they will say buzz I will say five, they will say buzz, and so on and so forth. Immediately children can see the pattern, which is great because it really allows them to start understanding those times tables. So you can try that for any times table, three times, four times, five times, and basically they say buzz instead of the multiple and then continue on counting. So it's a really good game for listening as well. Children really have to listen to the word, or the number, sorry, before, so that they can continue on. And they also need to really think about those times tables because they need to think about what was buzz. Oh, it was two, so now I'm on number three. Fizz buzz is the more challenging element of it. So once you've established the rules and you children understand how to play, you can introduce um, fizz as well. And basically, you will introduce another times table. So this time I'm going to focus on the two times tables and the five times tables. So you will say, Tell your children to so again establish your rules. So we're going to say every multiple of two, you need to say the word buzz. Every multiple of five, you need to say the word fizz. And every multiple that is in the two and the five tables must be fizz buzz. So you can see the more challenging element there, but it is really lots of fun. So just for example, again, counting around the room. So one, buzz because it's a multiple of two, three, buzz, fizz because it's a multiple of five, buzz, seven, buzz, nine, fizz buzz. So it really gets the children thinking, it's loads of fun and it's just a really nice game to actually get them focusing and it can be a wee bit noisy but it's, it's lots of fun. Now this is a really good one for movement if you really want to get the children up and moving and again it works a little bit like fizz buzz where the children have to do different aerobics moves for different um, times tables. So again I would start very simply and say right you have to do the aerobics moves for the two times tables so when it's a multiple of two. So again they start counting around the room but when they get to the multiple of two, they must do an aerobics move. I like to actually let them decide what move they want to do. So whether it be star jumps or touching their toes or stretches, it's just a really nice way to get children up moving, especially in the afternoon and when they get a bit tired. It doesn't even have to be in your math session. It's a really good way of just getting children practicing the times tables. So for example, if I'm choosing the two times tables, um, we start counting again so we say one and then we're going to say for multiples of two it's going to be a star jump so it'll be one and everybody can do it together two three they stand still four five they stand still six and again it's just relating that movement to maths and really getting that interactive element in stand up sit down another really good way of thinking about those multiples, those answers of the times tables. Basically, you will say, if it's a multiple of two, you must stand up. If it's not a multiple of two, you must sit down. So it really just reverses that idea as well, of thinking about what is the calculation to get to the answer. So it's a nice way of exploring the times tables, just to, in a different um, format. So I will say to the children, six, and they must think, 
is six in the two times tables. How do I know? They will be using the fact that they know that all even numbers are multiples of two. Uh, they will maybe be thinking counting in twos, two, four, six, and all that lovely maths is going on in their heads, which is great. So I will say six, they'll all have to stand up. If I say three, they sit down. Nine, stay sitting. Ten, stand up. So a really good way of just exploring those maths, mathematical patterns as well. Finger speed multiplication is a great one if you want your children to work in pairs with each other. Um, again, it doesn't have any resources required. You can actually just get this at the beginning of your maths lesson as a mental starter or again just throughout the day as a little break up activity or a little brain break. So basically you'll have two children in a partnership and they basically put one hand behind their back on a count of three or if you want to blow a whistle or ring a bell they will put up a number on their fingers so it could be four could be three whatever and the other partner will put up a number and you need to multiply those num two numbers so four times two the first person to shout out the answer eight is the winner so i'll explain that again so two children hands behind their back on the whistle they put up their fingers two times two they must shout out the answer and it can be a bit noisy but it's lots and lots of fun. And you can also then add in the 10 fingers as well. So they can put up 10 times 10. Um, not great for the getting up to the 12 times tables, but it's a good way of getting started. And especially with those earlier times tables. Bingo is another really easy way to explore the times tables. Again, no resources required. Um, maybe just a piece of paper um, or a whiteboard if you really want to record those numbers. And I basically just get the children, I don't worry about generated bingo sheets or anything. I just basically get the children to choose six numbers. So I might say choose six numbers between one and 25. And if I'm exploring the two times tables, obviously um, change your number um, limits around depending on what times tables you want to explore. Um, this can be good for focusing on one certain times table or it could be good um, for focusing on a range of times tables. Sometimes I would do this um, instead of a Friday quiz. So instead of just asking them their, them their times tables, we would explore it in form of bingo. It's just a little bit more fun and it sometimes takes that pressure off children as well because they are sometimes under a lot of pressure to get everything right and this is a really good way of just detracting from that and also being able to focus on your um, children that are maybe struggling a little bit with learning those times tables. So I would just ask them to choose six numbers between 1 and 25, so any numbers you like, um, 7, 3, 9, 4, 17 and 20 and I might say write, um, I never tell them what times tables we're focusing on to begin with because then they can be a bit manipulative and uh, write down all the times tables um, that are within that. And I will then call out, well, anyone have the answer to three times three? They can cross off nine. Anyone have the answer to two times 10? 20, and so on and so forth. Children will quickly learn that choosing things like prime numbers isn't going to work. So it's a really good way of having that discussion as well. And if you do have children choosing a number that maybe is a prime number, you can also do a calculation of 1 times 17 or whatever, just to be able to for them to cross that off. But it is a really good way of exploring what, why did you choose those numbers and um, what would you choose how would you choose differently next time? So not only do you get the actual immediate practice of the times tables, but you also get that sort of strategy and that method starting to come through in the discussion afterwards. So you might even, you don't need to do it every time, but you might just want to say, well, Mary has chosen 17. Why do you think that might not be a good choice? Oh, it's a prime number. Yes, we understand that. So maybe we're not going to call out the 17 times tables. So possibly not choosing prime numbers again. So all that lovely, rich discussion comes out of it as well. So um, have fun. Don't be playing them all at one time. But um, it's really good, just really to get the children moving and practicing and interacting with the times tables.